To discover more about what's happening in the carbon farming research area, details on greenhouse gases and the global carbon cycle, and how the agricultural sector contributes to that cycle, we talk to a leading carbon farming researcher from the University of Melbourne. My name is Richard Eckhart. I'm an associate professor at the University of Melbourne and also a director of the Primary Universities Climate Challenges Centre, um, aimed at um, in, uh, research on climate change, climate change impacts on agriculture and carbon farming. A good place to start when looking at the science behind carbon farming research is running through the stages of the global carbon cycle. The global carbon cycle is, is meant to be in balance. So we've got carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's exchanging the whole time into plant material through photosynthesis, it's being absorbed into the oceans um, and it's being released back to the atmosphere in a nearly neutral cycle. What we've unfortunately done is we've found permanent stores of carbon in the, in, the, in, the, in the land and we're releasing these stocks of carbon that have been trapped out of the atmosphere for many generations, we're releasing it back into the atmosphere and these are being burned through our, our vehicles, through our power stations and increasing the carbon budget in the atmosphere and that's become an imbalance in the carbon cycle. That means there's more carbon now in the atmosphere than there was prior to us releasing these fossil fuels. The problem with that is that the carbon in the atmosphere and other sources of greenhouse gases absorb infrared radiation and they release it back into the atmosphere through heating the atmosphere. And, and that is what leading to a warming of the atmosphere as a result of global warming. The common types of greenhouse gases include carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide to simplify measuring the volume of these gases in the atmosphere, they are converted to a CO2 equivalent. To find out more, go to the AFI or government websites. How does Australian agriculture contribute to the carbon cycle? Ag Australian agriculture is both a positive and negative contributor to the carbon cycle. In most agricultural systems, we've got the same photosynthesis um, occurring. Uh, crops and pastures are trapping uh, carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, putting it into um, carbohydrates, that's going out as human food or is going out as animal products. And that cycle is largely neutral uh, in our agricultural systems. Where the imbalance comes is where we've uh, got ruminants, for example, that are releasing some of that carbon back as methane into the atmosphere. Now, methane is chemically quite different to carbon dioxide. It, it absorbs infrared radiation at about 25 times more than carbon dioxide, so it heats the atmosphere more. Uh, the other imbalance we create in agriculture is where we put fertilizers on and those nitrogen fertilizers cost a lot of energy to make in the first place. But secondly, once we put them on, some of the nitrogen then is lost, uh, is not captured in plants, it's not captured in the meat and milk that we produce, and it's released to the atmosphere as a gas, either nitrous oxide or ammonia, which then forms a greenhouse gas eventually. We asked Richard to give us an insight into how farmers can play a role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions or storing carbon. We like to think that there's, there's opportunities here to improve production efficiency at the same time as reducing greenhouse gases. So that's, a, that's an obvious way our, in our research can explore productivity gains at the same time. Uh, because you've got to think of methane as being a very dense form of energy. So if we can stop that methane being lost as a gas and retain that energy in the system, Theoretically, there's more energy there for production, per productive purposes. So we're looking at, at ways in which we can feed ruminants to reduce the amount of methane produced, feed them in a more balanced way that improves their production efficiency but also suppresses the methane and allows it to be used as an energy source. The same with nitrous oxide. Losing nitrogen from the agricultural systems is a, uh, it's a loss of nitrogen uh, that could have gone into crop production that's now going out as a gas um, of no productive value. Are there ways in which we can apply fertilizers through adjusting the rate, the source, the timing, the placement of the fertilizer or the product we use that then is more efficient in utilizing the nitrogen through to crop production or grass production and not losing it as a, uh, an emission? Yeah, so the, the opportunity exists for carbon storage in agricultural systems as well. Obviously the carbon that's trapped out of the atmosphere in plants like uh, a, wheat, a wheat crop or a pasture that just decays naturally um, and most of that just goes back to the atmosphere as part of a natural cycle. So there's no storage of carbon. So what you've got to do is you've got to look at where carbon stops in the cycle for a long, long period of time. So where does it stop for 100 years? And usually where carbon stops is in trees, in trees that are now standing as, as, as carbon. About half the, half the wood in trees is carbon um, or in soils. So those are the two opportunities for farmers to play a role in storing carbon or sequestering carbon in our systems. Either planting trees that are going to be there for a, a hundred years 
or improving the quality of their soils and thereby storing carbon in the soils for long periods of time. The, the important here is a continuum from research through to uh, extension and adoption. So uh, a lot of research still has to be done on profitable ways in which emissions can be reduced and carbon is stored in the landscape. Uh, and then extending that back out to farmers. So when, when we find profitable systems that farmers can adopt, I think we'll see a rapid adoption of those, of those systems. But what most of our scenarios are showing is that where we can provide a productivity outcome while we reduce emissions, that is the largest incentive that, that will be there available for farmers to adopt practices. Uh, there is a growing awareness amongst farmers now that carbon is part of the management that they have a responsibility for that essentially car farming is about carbon. Um, it's about taking atmospheric carbon, turning it into product, and then turning that out as a product for human consumption or for fiber, uh, for, for uh, wool and, um, and other products. Um, so once farmers start clicking into the fact that it's about carbon farming, that's what we do, um, we then start thinking and getting the message out about uh, there are more efficient ways of doing that, of converting that carbon into efficient products without actually affecting the environment adversely. Uh, every year that we continue the research process, more and more options will come available for them to apply an additive to their fertilizer, to uh, apply a different rotation practice that will store more carbon in the soil, all of them adding up to a more profitable outcome in the end. The carbon farming videos have been produced by the Australian Farm Institute and supported by funding from the Australian Government.